What's up, everyone? Eddie Mercado here with BloodyElbow.com, and I'm about to speak with the 15 and 4 Kenny Robertson as he is set to take on Ron Carniero at UFC Fight Night 94 on September 17th. So, we're going to give Kenny a call and find out what he's been up to as of late, how his training camp is going for this fight, and find out what we can expect from him in Hidalgo, Texas. Mr. Kenny Robertson. Hey, how's it going? How you doing, sir? Eddie Mercado here with Bloody Elbow. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Uh, I'm well. I'm well. I, I appreciate you taking out the time to speak with me. You got a huge fight on your hands. Ron Carniero at UFC Fight Night 94. Super exciting. How have things been going? Going good. Going good. Uh, actually headed down to Jackson for this camp and uh, been working out there. Jackson so. Week? So got a good, good camp in. Okay, what's life like uh, down in Albuquerque? <laughs> boring. I mean, it's good. It just trains, take a nap, eat, sleep, repeat. train some more, <laughs> repeat. So I mean, good guys down there. Great, great coaches. Great workout partners. Um, it's pretty down there, down there too. Went for a couple drives and a couple hikes and stuff like that. Okay, so. and how long have you been uh, with those guys? Were you with them for the Saunders fight? Uh, no, this was the first time going down there. So I was there for about four weeks. I uh, just got back home, a couple of days of cardio and some different workouts back home before I had the fight week. So. Okay, awesome. What was your biggest takeaway from going down there? Uh, it was just good to have multiple training partners that I can go hard with. Uh, you know, and then just how knowledgeable, you know, I learned when it's just good to have good partners that want to go hard, but not, like, injure you or anything. So, I mean, everyone down there goes hard, and, you know, you look out for each other and help each other with stuff, so it was a good time. Okay, awesome. Now, back in college, you attended Matt Hughes's alma mater, Eastern Illinois. What do you think's your biggest takeaway from your collegiate wrestling days that you applied to your MMA career? Uh, you know, our wrestling coach, uh, Ralph McCausland, he, uh, was an amazing coach and he was really good at ground wrestling and defense on the, your feet and everything. And just, uh, you know, he kind of had a tenacity to him. He was 50 years old and he would still give everybody in the room difficulties at like 150 is all he weighed. So, uh, just, uh, you know, being tenacious and, and being aggressive and just, uh, uh, one of my favorite quotes that he ever said is like, you know, when you're turning somebody over to pin them, you don't, you don't just turn them over to pin them. You, you, you hurt them. So they want to put their shoulder down, but you make you, know, you want to make them stop. You want to make them quit. So. Okay. Now, did you, uh, did you ever link up with Matt Hughes at all? Yeah. Yeah. No, actually, uh, before I went down to Jackson's, he was up kind of by my neighborhood and we, uh, we rolled. So, okay, awesome. Uh, we we rolled quite a few times. Um, sometimes I go down to Hillsboro. Sometimes he's he's been up here once or twice. So, you know, it's it's a little bit of a drive, so I don't do it all the time. But even before my last fight, I went down probably four or five times and rolled with him. So, okay, that's he's awesome. Still, he's still in crazy shape. So, oh, I bet <laughs> he's he was always known for his uh, impeccable physique. Yeah, he's one of those. Those freaks that could probably take a year off and still come back and grapple with anybody, you know. You think there's any chance he'll be uh, making a return at all? No, I think he's done fighting for sure. I don't think, you know, I think he might maybe do some grappling tournament someday if he wanted to. But as far as fighting, I think he's probably done. Okay. Now, uh, you've been in the, you made your debut in the UFC five years ago. And uh, you kind of fly under the radar a little bit. Do you think that's uh, that's an advantage for you? Not uh, sure. I mean, I don't really. Uh, I was actually surprised that one of the coaches down at Jackson Link was like, "Oh, I got to pick your brain on a couple of things," because he saw the uh, my submission of the night uh, knee bar that I did and everything. So uh, yeah. some, some, um, some people uh, that, that know the sport know know me, but but then actually it was funny because I had two roommates. 
and they like didn't realize that was me until like the week three. It's like, oh man, that was awesome. That was, I remember that. Yeah, that knee bar you you hit on Brock Jardine was absolutely amazing, and I think it was the first time that I've ever seen a a knee bar getting. Uh, secured from from back position i think they call it a kickstand or something like that do you have a name for it no nah, i don't some people call it kickstand some somebody did a like a modification of it a long time ago like so that can stretch or something weird like that but i just something i learned how to do just wrestling in college because i'd always get high with the legs and and i would just grab that leg to protect myself from falling off the top but okay well if you hit it again I think you should name it the Kenny Robertson. Oh, yeah? <laughs> the Kenny Robertson, oh, shit. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, man, of your 15 wins, 13 of them have been finishes. And of those 13 finishes, 10 of them have been in the first round. That's insane. Like, that is an insane finishing rate. Why do you think it is that you're, you're able to finish such tough competition? I just always look to finish, uh, you know, obviously, oh, that's a wrestler in me or what, you know, why that is, but I mean, you're, you're there to fight and win, so why not do it quick? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so after your, uh, Sultan oh. Ali fight, there was about a, a little over a year gap before the Ben Saunders fight. What was going on during that break? Oh, uh, it wasn't a year, was it? Uh, you fought you fought Salton in January of fifteen, and then Saunders in July of sixteen. Yeah. Oh, I ended up. I had a fight lined up, and then uh, I was training with uh, Dan Hornbuckle, and he was throwing a kick, and I threw an overhand and let my hand drop, and just exploded my eye. I had like fourteen stitches or something like that oh. above my eye. So that was like three weeks before I was supposed to fight. And I was like, well, this, I can't, obviously I can't fight now. i have just explode again. I wouldn't have been able to train and everything, so. Okay, that was, that was, uh, supposed to be, that was for George Sullivan. Yeah. yeah. Okay, wow. So is your, your eye okay? I mean, was there any like orbital damage to the bone? No, just just hit me just in the right spot and uh, kind of wide, like a wide cut. Mm. So, okay. but I've got a bunch of scar tissue above my eyes, so. Didn't take a whole lot to split me open. Gotcha. Okay. So, uh, yeah, like we're saying, in your last fight, you had Ben Saunders in a really close match. I mean, you dropped him in the first, and uh, it was just back and forth throughout, and he ended up getting the split decision nod. What were your thoughts on the fight? Uh, you know, I just went out there and fought as hard as I could. And then uh, third round, I took him down, and I got stuck in his little hold, and... I wasn't thinking I was really taking any damage. I was just trying not to, like, scramble out and get caught in an arm bar or anything. So I was just mm-hmm. holding position because I thought I had won the first two rounds. And that's what you what happens when you leave it up to the judges. So it is what it is. It can't really change now. So just got to keep on going, you know. Okay. Now you're approaching your ninth UFC fight with Ron Carniero. Where are you at in terms of contract? Uh, I think this is my second fight on my four fight uh, contract. But you know how the UFC is; they can cut you whenever they want. So yeah, yeah, very true, um, and they can re-sign you whenever they want, also. Yep. Yep. So okay, so uh, UFC Fight Night ninety four, Ron Carniero. Between the two of you, you have twenty five finishes. Super impressive. I mean, is this is this going to go the distance, or is there a good chance this is going to end early? Yeah, I don't really see it going the distance. Um, both of us usually start off pretty strong in the first round, so it should be interesting, <laughs> to say the least. And, uh, I mean, we're both always looking to finish. And a lot of people don't realize that Rowan's got knockout power, too, so, you know, he's got great grappling, you know, uh, and he's got... You know, the knockout power, which you don't, I mean, most people don't really realize this because he usually bull rushes and gets people to the ground, but, you know, you got to be careful with them. So, I mean, I've, obviously I've knocked people out and tapped people out too, so uh, it should be uh, interesting. Do you think you want to keep it on the feet with them, though, and uh, avoid the ground? Or do you want to kind of test oh, uh, out who's the better grappler? 
Yeah, I'll, I'll take him down if he comes in hard. I'll try out that. I always use my hands to set up my shots, and my shots to set up my hands. So I've taken down black belts before and beat them up on the ground. So as long as I'm careful, don't get too reckless. Okay, now on paper, I mean, it seems like a pretty close fight. Who do you think is going to be the favorite in this one? Oh, I don't care. I'm just going to go out there and fight them either way. Okay. (laughs) Now, um, are you doing anything special or, like, something in particular for Carniero? Uh, I've just been improving everything. I think the biggest thing is I went down to Jackson's to get better partners to roll with, you know. So, okay. my my uh, ground game should be more in point than it's been the last couple of fights. Really, like the last couple of days I was down there, I was really getting, my scrambles were back to form and everything was just flowing more quick and uh, everything just felt better. Okay, awesome. Now, with a win, what would be next for you or what would you want? Uh, just whoever they give me, I don't really care. Like I said, I just like to fight. So, uh, I mean, I think he was, uh, his last fight, I think he was ranked 15 at middleweight. So, hopefully somebody at least in the top 15 at welterweight after if I, you know, when I win this next fight, so. Okay, now you say you just like to fight, but are there any, like, personal goals you have set out for this or certain people you want to test yourself against? Well, just obviously just keep on fighting and winning and just, you know, got to work myself up the food chain so now that I'm actually healthy it should be a lot easier to do that okay now do you have any sponsors or people you want to give a shout out to uh just family and friends you know my coaches all the guys at uh Jackson Wink uh everyone down there uh you know, I'm very fortunate that somehow God blessed me with a lot, you know, a great family and uh, really wonderful friends that actually are just good people, you know, so pretty fortunate. Okay, awesome. Now, uh, what are your, you got any social media platforms or Twitter handles or anything where fans can follow you on this journey? Yeah, I'm uh, 170 Kenny on uh, Twitter, so uh, at 170 Kenny. And then uh, I think there's a Facebook fan page. Okay, awesome. Well, Kenny Robertson, thank you so much for taking out the time. UFC Fight Night 94, September 17th, Ron Carniero. Best of luck to you, sir. Thank you. Have a good one. All right, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. So there you have it. The 15-4 and four Kenny Robertson set to take on Ron Carniero at... UFC Fight Night 94 on September 17th. So go check that out. In the meantime, read me on bloodyelbow.com. You can follow me on Twitter at the Eddie Mercado, and be a good person.